Good afternoon, everyone. Good evening for some, good morning for some. It is very nice to be here with such an expert audience. So I'm going to talk. We cannot hear you. You've gone on mute. That would help again. So I'm here today because a year ago, you heard Emma Subirats, the Agrivoc manager, talk about Agrivoc implementing multi-scale, multi-hierarchy management. And we're here a year later to talk about what actually happened. I'd also like to say hello to our colleague Andrea, who is here. So Agrivoc, for those who do not know, it is a thesaurus. It's a controlled vocabulary, and it covers the areas of work of FAO. So food, nutrition, agriculture, fisheries, forestry, food security. It's coordinated by FAO and published by us, but we have a regional network of people working on the content. And it is a very popular thesaurus to index and tag information resources, not just on um, books and literatures, which is what it started out as, but also very much for data sets and information. So here you can see examples of it being used on the FAO website and also in the CGR CG space. So for the more technical audience, it's a SCOS concept scheme and it's also linked to open data set. We have about 37,000 concepts and 750,000 terms. And that is an up to 38 languages. And it is again, as we spoke earlier, we talked about interoperability. Agrivoc is aligned to other multilingual and monolingual knowledge organization systems. Here is a graphic of some of them. And it's nice to hear some partners here today. So here is an example. Now this is only possible because we have the network of editors and editors might be from a national institution translating a language. They may also be from a network or institution focusing on a topic like dry lands, ecosystems or fisheries or land governance indeed. So uh, this is why, why it is possible to have this, this multilinguality, which is one of the things that makes Agrivoc unique. And with this, that means that I can search for information on sunflower seed in Polish and I can find an article in French or Czech or Ukrainian. So it is really important that we have this aspect because a lot of research is not always translated to English and it is not always discoverable and accessible. So Agrivoc is one of the tools that makes it more discoverable to researchers. And here is a nice map of our partners around the world. The very newest one, which you can see in red at the bottom, is the Belarus Agricultural Library. They uh, just said they would join last week. So then we have, they will have Belarusian coming in as a new language, which is very exciting. And all this is voluntary work. That's important to say. The institutions and partners are doing this to make the research at their national level more visible and accessible. And we really appreciate their efforts. We could not do it without them. So. What is new? This is the new part. So we now have the option of having uh, specialized concept schemes within Agrivoc. A year ago we talked about it, now we're actually doing it. That means that we can incorporate other controlled vocabularies. They can be part of Agrivoc, but also be managed separately. And we have the first ones coming in. And we wanted to have a special shout out to the Landvoc and the Land Portal Foundation. They just went live with their new foundation, the new hierarchy two weeks ago, I think, which is uh, big news. So the important part of this is that these, this means that we can welcome in other expert communities. They have the expertise, they have the controlled vocabularies, they have the up-to-date knowledge on the topic, but they may not always have the infrastructure to, to manage it. This way we bring in the specialized concept schemes, they're part of Agrivoc, but also have, they're also, they also have uh, their own identity and can be exported and managed within Agrivoc. And they also have URIs, which means they can be linked across systems, including things like AgriPortal. So the question was, how does this actually happen? I'll have some more graphics in a minute. So basically, that we set up a scheme. VocBench is a system that we use to, to manage Agrivoc. Other Thesauri, like um, Eurovoc, also use it. It's managed by the University of Tuvergata in Italy. So we create a scheme and then they have a new hierarchy just for that scheme. And then you set up links between them. 
but that means you can have, you can, because uh, that's a problem. Many people say Agravoc is huge, it's complex, it has a really strange hierarchy, they don't like it. This is the nice thing, you can look at a very small subset, you can create your own custom vocabulary with your own custom hierarchy. So, um, but it's all living at the same time. So here is what it looks like in reality. You can see the red ring. Here I'm adding something to a scheme. In this case, I'm taking value chains, which will also be important to, to fisheries. And I'm adding it to ASFO, which is the Aquatic Sciences and Fisheries Abstracts Scheme. I say, fine, I would like to add this to them. This is a hypothetical example. You can see now that ASFA has shown up as green, just to the left of the arrow. And it, then it's now that the uh, value schemes lives both in Agravoc, because they all live in Agravoc, but it also lives in the subscheme of ASFA. But then it, I don't know where and it should sit in ASFA in the hierarchy. So I have to go down and select the property ASFA broader, which is a custom one just for the scheme. I select that. And in this case, Agravoc has value chains sitting under production economics. But that is not a concept that exists in ASFA. So here, ASFA, the ASFA broader is economics. Same scheme, same structure, same hierarchy, same URI. And if someone adds a translation, both schemes benefit from it. But they have differentiated visibility. Here's another nice example where I have land management, another important concept. And that one actually lives in three different schemes. It lives in Agravoc, but it also lives in the aquatic and, and uh, Sciences and Fisheries Abstracts one, and also lives in Landvok. And you can also see here, they have slightly different hierarchies in the two concepts. But again, we're benefiting from each other. We're benefiting from de shared definitions, shared translations, and shared infrastructure. And it's important to know, because people come and say, well, what, what, what do we need to do to do this? It's really important to know that you're not looking at your data anymore in isolation, but you're part of a bigger ecosystem. So if you changed, value chains or added a new definition. It doesn't apply only to your scheme. It applies to all other schemes. But that also means that if someone adds a um, more translations or definitions or scope notes, everyone benefits from it. So when you um, have the Agravoc release, for example, you only see the Agravoc data separately, but the other one can be extracted if needed. Exactly. So this is for the technical people who would like to know about this. This is how it works. They would download, if I wanted to only pull out the, the fisheries concepts, I would pull out everything in the ASFA scheme. I would look for, uh, take out the Agravoc SCOS broader and, and then use the, Agri the ASFA broader. And then you have a custom mini scheme of Agravoc in your specific topic available. So that is something we're quite interested in and exploring more of because we don't have the, the uh, resources to cover every single topic in depth, but we know there are specialized communities out there who do. And we really want to bring in that expertise and knowledge to Agravoc. And this is what it looks like. For example, you have public health sitting in three different schemes. This is in the fisheries one, FowlX, which is a new scheme coming in, and in Agravoc. It is the same concept, same labels, same definitions, but it sits in three different places. And that is the end of my presentation, very short summary here. So if you want, have any questions about this, I know this went quite quickly, but please talk to us. You can reach us at agrovoc.fal.org. We're also doing a webinar next week with the CGIR. If we can put that in the chat if anyone is interested. And um, yeah, happy to take questions.